In this video, we're going to be looking at Giberilins. Giberilins. Now, um, if you haven't seen our previous videos on phyto hormones, you can check it out. So, we said we have um, plant hormones, also known as phyto hormones, where we talk about um, the five main types of plant hormones, and then we look at auxins in detail. You can check that out with us. So, in this video, we're going to be looking at Giberilins and their function. So, what we have right here is the structure of gibberellin, which is also known as gibberellic acid. Now, this structure is derived from a group of um, a chemical structure, which is known as gibberellin, uh, actually, in C. Gibberellin. Now, this is not the only derivative of gibberellin, but we have a lot more. Um, uh, some research show that there are over 125 members in this that can be derived from the, this gibberellin. But the um, most, most widely available one is the gibberellic acid, which is found in plants. And we're going to look more into this. Now, this gibberellic acid is produced um, biosynthetically at the shoots of young developing seeds and then um, this biosynthesis actually starts in the chloroplast all right now what are, what are the main functions of this gibberellic acid and uh, that's what we are going to look at in this video we are just going to have an overview of the functions of this gibberellic acid so let's get started the first function is that it um, it helps in stem growth. It helps in stem growth. How does it do that? Uh, it's this gibberellic acid. Um, it causes hyper elongation. Um, let me put that here. Causes hyper elongation of stem. How does it do that? It stimulates or it stimulates cell division. It stimulates cell division. It stimulates cell division and uh, uh, and also cell elongation. All right. So this is this how. Um, Gibberellic acid works in causing stem growth. So the effect of this is that we're going to have a, a quick plant growth in the stem area that is going to cause the plant to be tall as opposed to having dwarf plants. Another function of, um, of gibberellic acid is the induction of seed germination. Induction of seed germination. Now, it's, research has also shown that it can also cause uh, seeds to germinate Usually, seeds that requires a very good temperature or less to induce germination. And so, in order to cause stratification, so let's say, um, could a uh, cold condition. So, that is talking about stratification. You can check that out. And uh, also in light induced germination, also in light induced germination. Another function of gibberellic acid is production of enzymes during during seed germination. During germination. Alright, how does it do that? It stimulates the production of numerous enzymes that is a function of uh, gibberellic acid. Notably, one of these enzymes is uh, alpha amylase. Um, alpha amylase, and then this, this, this is usually found in the cereal, cereals or grains. So that is another function of the gibberellic acid. Another function is uh, fruit setting and growth. Fruit setting and growth. Uh, this is usually induced by um, 
exogenous applications let me see here exogenous exogenous application and now this is talking about factors that I know within the cell there is external factors that is going to cause this uh, fruit setting that is why we have superbolic acid coming in to aid and uh, finally induction of mildness and dioecious flowers so these are the um, these are the main functions of gibberellins and uh, I hope this comes handy in your examination. Um, remember to subscribe and also hit the like button. Um, thank you.